Ladies and gentlemen, we have here today the one and only Fuck Render. Frederick, how are you today? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm doing good. Thank you. Excellent. What part of the world are you? I know you're always traveling. Are you home? Uh, yeah, I'm on the east coast of uh, Canada right now. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're working on something? You're taking some time off? What's what's the game plan right now? Uh, I haven't took some. I haven't took time off in in ten years, so no no time off for me. But uh, uh, yeah, so I'm I'm currently working on a couple solo shows and uh, group shows, and working on I'm building a gallery right now in uh, in Montreal. So these are my my focus right now. Excellent. Tell us a little bit more about the gallery. Yeah, yeah. So we just got uh, about four thousand square feet uh, in Milex in Montreal. Uh, and we're building this, uh, this beautiful, like, uh, cocktail cafe, uh, with a, a traditional art gallery, uh, with some mix of digital. So we're really trying to push, uh, what digital art means and, and how can a traditional looking gallery can have some digital art in it. Uh, and inside of this, we have this, uh, immersive room, which is a 360 box with projection mapping. So it's going to be really, uh, really cool. I'm very excited to, uh, to build this project right now. It sounds exciting. Is that a project that you have had in your mind for quite some time or just kind of the evolution of your career where you at today was just a natural progression to have your own gallery? Um, so it, it all started like, uh, so a few months ago I, I was living in Vancouver and for years I wanted to build this with uh, my, my fiance. And um, it's the real estate in Vancouver just doesn't, like doesn't make sense. Uh, it was way too expensive. Uh, so that's why we decided to go on the East Coast so we can build this uh, somewhere that it was more affordable and it makes it made more sense. Uh, the culture here in Montreal is way better than, than it was in Vancouver for art and everything. So it just made sense to do this here. Uh, but yeah. So what's the status of the gallery now? I mean, I know uh, we closed it to open and we're a few months away. How close are we able to see it? Yeah, we're aiming for June. So realistically, July would make more sense um, <laughs> because there's always uh, imprévu. But yeah, July. That's very exciting. And then what else in terms of the gallery? So you mentioned it's going to be a, a combination of a lot of digital art plus also a cafe and yeah. things like that. Do you feel that's just how everything is going to be in the future? I, I'm wondering, not even in, in retails, a lot of the stores are really integrating virtual experiences for their people. Uh, so how, how different do you think the gallery is going to be or really more interested in pushing the boundary and kind of test how people are going to react to those experiences? Yeah, that's why we, um, I think the, 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 the space, we're, we're, we're putting a lot of energy and effort in that space. Uh, we, want, we want this to be, to be a statement piece, right? Um, it's, just, it's not just a gallery. It's not just a cafe, a cocktail bar. It's, it's really uh, a symbiosis of, of all these energy together. Uh, we're really building something that will visually be gorgeous, right? Uh, and I feel the issue with digital art is like we don't have a proper displays for digital art. There's no, there's no true like digital art galleries. So that's why we really want to focus on having this, this traditional part of it, but also have this digital part of it because I think these can coexist. So many times I got refused in art galleries because I'm a digital artist. So we really want to, open the, 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 or arm to every type of artist. Can be photographers, can be art, like digital artists, can be painters, can be, uh, so we're really trying to push the boundaries of what art is. And we also, we, we want to make this experience, uh, fun and, and without the pretension, right? If you go to most of the art galleries, it's always so pretentious and there's always like a shadow following you in the, the gallery trying, trying to sell you some, something. We, 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 we don't want that. We just want people to go see art shows again and see art galleries and just enjoy time with friends and everything. It's a, we're taking the, the pretentious part of, outside of art galleries. You said something that a lot of galleries don't know how to exhibit digital art. So how yeah. do you, in your, in your eyes, how do you exhibit? Yeah. I think the main issue right now is like the screen. So we, we have to work with like uh 16 by nine or by nine by 16 screens and Sometimes you'll go to uh, galleries and you'll see like cables and everything. And that, that to me, it pissed me off so much because it doesn't, 
it doesn't look sexy. It's not, it's, it, it just doesn't make sense, right? So we're really focusing on making these digital canvas as seamless as possible and as operational and visually uh, beautiful as possible. That's really where our focus is. So engraved inside the wall and like really try to show what a digital art gallery should look like and not the opposite. Right? Do you think because digital art, it's something that can be, I don't want to say can change so quickly because the, the media that have been used, uh, how often do you think the exhibition is going to be staying in a gallery? Normally, you know, exhibition will vary between, you know, four to six weeks yeah. now because you have the ability to create things, you know, in a different pace with a different media. Is something that you want to rotate faster or not necessarily? No, I think that's the main issue right now is I feel our attention span is so quick right now, right? Um, and that's why I think a lot of people go back to film photography and all these, these medium that are just like taking your time and just creating like good art, right? Um, I think with the era of like reels, TikTok, I, everything goes too fast in my opinion. I think we need to, to step back and just appreciate art and just like take a breather, right? Um, so we want to create these exhibition. We want to welcome artists to create something that will last, uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, we don't want a faster rotation. I don't, I, I don't think maybe it's me that I don't want to adapt to what's coming and everything, but I, I just don't feel it, it sustainable to push people to like just feed more and more and more. I think we need to like take it slow and, and enjoy art. Uh, you have publicly said that you believe that digital art in FE kind of blew up too fast, that people were, weren't really educated about it. Do you think now, uh, in 2024, moving on, as a general population, do we understand better what NFT and digital art is, or we still have a lot to do? No, we're, I, I think with especially the, the bubble pop and everything, I think we that set us back uh, like super far, even more. Uh, I think most people hate the word NFT. I personally don't like that word. I think it has a bad connotation because um, it's like saying like a, a producer is an MP3 artist, right? Mm. Um, I'm not. I'm an artist. I'm not an NFT artist. Uh, NFT is just a medium for artists, for digital artists, or not not only digital artists, but it's a new medium to sell art and tokenize and and uh, have a, a provenance um, because blockchain is forever. Um, but the issue is there's so much stuff on the blockchain as NFTs that doesn't make sense or doesn't make sense for me, but makes sense for someone else. And the main issue that we have right now is like, if you want to buy a ticket for a show that is an NFT, you'll buy it at the same place as a fine art, a fine digital art piece. So I think the, that's the issue right now is like, there's no, I mean, there's some, but it's not clear enough. Like people see, think about NFTs, they think about one thing, but it's so many different things, right? It, it can be, uh, medical data that are encrypted in the blockchain can, that can be collectibles, that can be art piece, that can be tickets for shows, that can be, uh, I don't know, Starbucks rewards. It can be so many different things, right? Um, and that's the issue right now is people hate NFTs so much that they don't want to pass that, pass that bridge of like, it's, it can be something else. Do you think that's mostly because how media prevail and really picture the world and the NFT and the whole blockchain aspect as well? Or it has more to do with perhaps, you know, some galleries or some artists were really aggressive in pushing forward. Even a lot of brands kind of jumping so quickly on that bandwagon as well that led to such a big bubble. Um, yeah, that that's the thing, right? Like, like uh, in 2021, when everything was exploding, like it, it's... It was like jumping on a, on a very fast moving train. Um, so a lot of people got lost and a lot of people got miseducated and everything. Uh, and it's, it's normal because it, it, everything went so crazy so fast and it was very overwhelming. I think now we, since we had like this, this market crash and everything and, uh, I don't see it as a crash. I, I see it more as a consolidation. I think now we're at LT level. Um, and I think we just need to educate people more about what, what what NFT means for me and what NFT means for other people, right? Because it doesn't mean the same thing for a music artist than a digital artist than a company that's trying to do reward system for their customers. Um, 
So I think that there's a big education part, and I don't think we have the tools yet, but I think it's coming. I think like the general public can feel a little bit overwhelmed, not only because, of course, the blockchain, but also the technology is moving so fast. So we're also talking about VR, we also talk about AI, mm -hmm. we also talk about argument reality, all those little things that have been implementing these days. Um, as an artist, are you prioritizing how you display your, your, your work with the best media possible? Are you trying to kind of push the boundaries a little bit, just kind of test the audience as well? How are you seeing, because there's so many opportunities, how are you picking, choosing how, you know, to showcase your work? Yeah, uh, that's actually a really good question. Uh, for me, I'm always, uh, always been interested in how can people see my art? as a digital right because i everything i do is like digital sculpture inside a 3d software that's how i see it um so that's why i created lucidia to create like this virtual environment so people can uh experience digital art in a different way um but i think it's it's really hard to like pick and choose right so i think you just need to go with what interests you so for me i'm not that interested in vr so I don't really tackle VR. I'm interested in AR. I'm interested in, in virtual experience and everything. But um, I think you just need to stay true to yourself and explore these domains that make sense for your art and, and something that you personally want to see grow, right? I kind of want to kind of, we've been talking about a lot of technology, what's going on right now with you, but I, I want to kind of take a pause and kind of go back a little bit in the past. I mean... How, I mean, you've been doing this for about a decade now. You established yourself as one of the leading guys in your field. How, how what, what was your fifth, first memory being exposed to art? How old were you? Where were you? Who introduced you? How this whole mm. kind of thing began? I mean, my sister, uh, she was, I mean, she's still a graphic designer. She was doing like a graphic design in my hometown and everything. So I think that that was my first exposure to like any sort of art. Uh, and after that, like, I always knew I wanted to do something with art, but I never knew exactly what. I tried to draw, I tried to paint, and I was very bad at drawing, very bad at painting. And the reason why is because to be good at something, it's not about luck or, or talent. It's, it's, it, it's only a, a matter of time. Uh, time and, 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 uh, you want to do it, right? So for me, I did, I, I was not interested in, in any other, I was interested in art, but I didn't know which medium, right? Um, so I, I started to do like clothing. I did a lot of like, like sewing, stuff like this. That was really interesting to me. I was probably like thir uh, 14 to 15 years old. Um, and I stopped on, I stopped doing this. I was really interested in doing 3D art for film actually. And when I was like 17, 18, uh, I applied to a school in Montreal. I got rejected. I applied again. I got rejected. So I gave up on, on this, this big dream of mine to do like 3D art at like 18, 19. Um, and I started to do like work in restaurants and everything. And I was, uh, after some time, I was just like getting bored and I, I had like an accident where, which left my left side a little bit like paralyzed. So I was like having like a moment of uh, uh, identity crisis, right? Um, and I just like thought about like this dream of mine to do like digital art and 3D. Uh, so I picked it up. I took Blender uh, and I, just started to do to do it for fun. After a few weeks, I started with Cinema 4D and really picked it up again. And I was like, "Oh, that's actually something I like. That's a me that's my medium. That's the medium I like." And I, I was so immersed in 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 3D art. And I remember I was like, I was working at the restaurant, and I would just like I would wake up, learn 3D art, go to go to my my waiting shift at the restaurant. I would leave the restaurant with my computer, go next door with my fiance used to work, it was like a, a bar next next door. And I would just like get super drunk on my computer and close the bar at like 3 a.m. And it was just like, it was rinse repeat for, I don't know, four years. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, you said something about to be good at something is nothing to do with talent or anything like this about time. So you, you truly believe on that. Talent doesn't really play a part over here. It's mostly putting the time. As you mentioned, for four years, you were just doing everything you could, you know, really pouring your soul on that new, on that new uh, skill. Technically, you have to learn a completely new skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think, like, for me, like, everything you want to do in life, like, I don't, I truly don't believe in talent. Uh, I think it's really just someone that was interested in something and spent an over amount of time on learning this, this particular skills, right? Um, I, I think it's all about time and, and dedication. 
And maybe talent is this, maybe the talent is being passionate about something and being willing to take the risk of spending most of your life trying to learn something. Maybe that's the talent at the end of the, the day, but... If you were to look back, uh, you created a few things that led to your current success, breakthrough as your as an artist. Uh, what would you what would you consider who those things were? I don't know. To ask me this question in five years, I haven't I haven't felt a breakthrough yet. So I I, I still I still see myself as the same as when I was doing 3D after my work shift at the restaurant. I to me I started to do art just because I wanted to feel better and just like feel feel a void inside me, right? Um, so yeah, I don't know. I. I don't know what success is, if that if that makes sense. Like to me, it's just all the all the good things happening is 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 good, but I need to feel good inside, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. You were being very open about how I help you with a lot of personal issues in the past, and you have an exhibition about that as well. Do you feel sometimes that maybe now, because you have, regardless, you don't consider yourself, you mentioned about success, you have reached a certain level of visibility, that mm -hmm. you feel pressure to perform a certain level or to create a certain level? Is that part of it? No. Um, no, not really. The only thing I think it's funny is like, because... I feel like 3D art is still new and a lot of people think like to be a 3D artist, you need, you work on games, you work on movies and, and all this stuff. And sometimes like, I, I would say like the, it's not a pressure because I don't give a shit, but most of the like 3D generalists give me shit because I'm a terrible like sculptor. I'm a terrible modeler. I'm a terrible UV mapper. I'm very bad at uh, all the technical stuff in 3D. I'm horrible, like terrible. And I think because of the visibility I have, a lot of like 3D generalists or, I don't know, people that have actual like technical skills, they're mad at me for where I'm at today, but I didn't choose to be where I'm at. Like people need to give me a break on this stupid shit. But yeah, I'm, I never claim to be a generalist or a technical guy. I just, I just do art to feel better and to have fun. Uh, and that's, I think that's the biggest comment I get like most of the time, like, like technical skill stuff. And I'm like, dude, I don't, care about technical stuff i just do art for fun like i just like so yeah but other than that i don't feel any pressure to do to accomplish anything i think there's just a, a inner fire inside me that just want to do more and accomplish more and i want to do like bigger sculptures bigger exhibitions like I, there's just been that drive inside me since i'm i'm super young when i started skateboarding when i was 10, 10 years old and at 11 years old was sponsored by the local shop like there's always been that that fire in me to do more. So um, I don't really care what people think or say about me. That's, I think I'm, I'm going to like, we're all going to die. So if I, <laughs> if I, if, I don't know, but that's true. If I start listening to people, if I, if I listen to people that, that told me that it was stupid to do art, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I think listening to people and, and that's the worst thing you can do in life. is just like, you have your own life. Just do you still skateboard? Yeah, of course. Uh, unfortunately, I, I I cannot skate as much as I wish I could. Uh, I have terrible knees, and I yeah, I need to be careful. But I I, I try to skate at least once a week. Uh, I started the skate brand with my friend Gabe uh, called My Knees, and it's uh, starting to to go really well, which I'm very excited. Um, what else do you do for yourself? I mean, you mentioned art is something that you're passionate about, and skateboard. What other things that you like to do for yourself? Uh not not enough. I think I, I spent too much time um, on my art career. Um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I spent more time with, with, with family, friends. Uh, and I, I know on my deathbed, I'll regret that. <laughs> uh, not spending time enough with my, my, my fiance and, and everything. Yeah, I think that's, that's one thing. Yeah, I think we, we, we feel the same way. We all look back and say, we should have done a little bit more with the family. But Always. we can only do what we can do in the present, right? In the present right now, we have lots of ideas and a lot of things to pursue it and completely yeah. go after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How's, how's your relationship with, with, them, with your family in terms of your work? They, do, they understand what you, you do. They were supportive in the beginning. I know you mentioned that you were raised by, by your father. And, uh, yeah. and it's, so how is that relationship, not only personally, but also with your choices? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's funny because I lost my mom when I was 10 years old, right? I mean, this is not funny. Uh, yeah, so I lost my mom when I was 10 years old. So I lost kind of 
like a big part of uh, my identity part of this, right? And I, I grew up with my dad. My dad was an amazing person, but he had like an alcohol problem. Uh, he was partying a lot. Um, great dad, just not really present. So most of the time I was like left alone. Uh, I would I would just like go to school by myself and I would just like wake up alone. My dad would uh, be somewhere I don't know. So I grew up like in, in a kind of terrible way, but um, I made it out, which is good. But um, I grew up with a lot of anxiety and, and, and a lot of like depression because of, of that, I would say. Um, and I didn't add that I, I didn't have like a super great relationship with my dad, even like growing up. Um, so we never really thought about my, my art and, and he never really understood. He passed away a few years ago, unfortunately. Uh, and I wish he would be there because I, like, I always, like, I, I kind of always wanted to, like, prove that I was gonna do something. Um, and unfortunately, I, I, I miss this opportunity. Um, sounds like big daddy issue, by the way, but it's, it, I'm chill with it. Um, uh, but yeah, like, I, I, I could never, talk to anyone about my art, but I'm grateful to have my, my fiance's parents. They're, they're amazing. And they're, they've been su super supportive of my art and everything. So that's cool. And I have my aunt, uh, aunt Mimi and my, my, my brother and sister, they're really supportive of, of what I do. Um, uh, which is amazing. I know my aunt doesn't like my, my art artist name, but I think she's, <laughs> she's still proud, which makes me, which makes me really happy inside me. But yeah. Uh, feel free to some questions if you like you don't want to answer okay i have no problem with that but uh, i'm an open book uh, I, you said when you talk about your mom there is a sweetness to your voice so what is the best memory you have of her? um that's funny i don't i i feel like this trauma really like wiped my brain out when when i was 10 years old so i don't remember most of the memories um uh, the only memory i i, I remember and She's gonna sound crazy for this, but she, she was actually like the sweetest person on, on earth as, as much as I remember. But I just remember one time I, she, she, we were in a rush and you know, like when you leave the, the seat belt outside of the door. Yeah. When you close the door. And I did this and she like kicked my ass. Like she literally like physically kicked my ass so hard because like we're in a rush and that's probably the best memory I have. But, um, it sounds, sounds harsh and everything, but she was so sweet, um, and funny, but. Now you were talking about some family members and your, uh, your, your fiance and their parents. Do you, do you plan to have kids? Do you want to have a family one day? Uh, yeah, that'd be my, that'd be my goal. I, I mean, like we've been technically we've been trying, for, we, I've been with her for almost 14 years now. So we've been trying for a long time and I, it's not something we, uh, we rush or anything and we don't, we're, we're at a state where we're okay if it happens and we're okay if it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, we're just, uh, yeah, we're, we're practicing as much as we can. So yeah. There's one I mean, way to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I mean, we're, we're, we play the sports, you know, you yeah. know how it is, but yeah, if that happens, happens, if it doesn't. Uh, do you sometimes, I mean, I understand the position is like, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, you know, you're already a person that you spend the rest of your life with. And that's itself. It's already winning the lottery. Uh, I've been married for 16 yeah. years, so I, nice. I, I know the feeling. Um, but if you find yourself becoming a parent, do you think about what kind of, uh, dad you want to be things that you want to maybe, uh, values that we want to implement, you know, things that mm. you, it's important in your household that you want your kids to grow up in beliefs. Yeah, I think I, I'll be there for them for sure. I think that's, that's something I liked when I was a kid. Like I was really grateful. I'm really grateful because I had like my, my aunt and my, my sister, she was really there for me when my dad was not around and but i think like being there for them is is really what's important um and yeah i i don't know i have no idea how to be a parent but i'll like everything in life i'll figure it out and i'll i'll try to be the best at it um but yeah i think being there is, is what's important i like your initiative of saying like you know what it's all good i'll figure it out there's a level of confidence on um, understanding that you know what whatever life's throwing at me perhaps a lot to do with the background how you were bringing and everything else uh, at what point when you were working, you know, exploring your artistic vision, you started working with the renderings and, you know, even with, you know, the technical aspect of your, of your art, at what point did you realize, you know what, I'm good at this. I mean, I have an interesting point of view. Was that ever a moment that for you? No, I still, I still think I suck. <laughs> like that's the thing. Like I have like the biggest imposter syndrome. I feel like I'm, 
I have no idea why people follow me on Instagram. I have no idea why I, I, I there's no, there, there was no moment that I was like, oh, I'm actually good at this. Like, even like sometimes I try to do something and I don't know the technical way to do it. So I cannot even do it. Um, so no, there's no, I wish I, I wish I could do like, oh, so I'm the shit. I'm good. But I, I, I no, there's no, I haven't felt this yet. So maybe, maybe one day, I hope so. Uh, but at, at the same time, I feel like if I start to tell myself I'm good and I'm, I, like I'm talented, I think that's the, that's the top, right? And I don't want, I don't think there's an actual top. I think there's always learn to, there's always room to improve and there's always room to grow and everything. Uh, and it's something I try to do for myself as a, as a human being is I'm, I'm always like about self growth and, and self improvement. Um, it's something that I've always been interested in because I've been in difficult scenarios when I was a kid and it's the way you end up being, it's the way you react to things. Um, so if you, re if you start to have like some followers and success and you, the way you react to it is, oh, I'm the shit and I'm good. That's not going to end well. Um, so I think it's, there's always like room for improvement and, and growth. You know, I, I feel like ever so often. Almost every other conversations I have with creative people, the imposter syndrome is something that everyone kind of had at one point. But there is one common denominator that I noticed with them is even though it doesn't matter how high on their, you know, of the game they are, they all have this really willing to, and they're very confident on their ability to get things done. It will feel, you know, you're not afraid to put the time, not afraid to make whatever it takes. So it's almost like they not quite believe they're as successful as we from outside see, but they understand that they can see it. They can make mm -hmm. it happen, whatever it is. It's all about, and I don't want to sound like a, like a, like too much like intense on this, but it's all about manifestation in my, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm not talking about like, like magic or anything, but I feel like if you really want something and you have, you have the drive to do it and you're willing to like commit and and know that by committing to something it's gonna it's gonna suck for a long time or it's gonna suck a lot and there's gonna be moment where you want to quit and everything but if you're if you want something so hard inside inside you that you'll you'll get it you just need to actually manifest it and that's why like I, when i started like I, I was like, I was journaling a lot, uh, when I was having more anxiety, uh, I used to have like six, seven panic attack a day. Now I have once every six months, let's say, uh, which I'm really grateful for. And I'm touching wood that stays like this, but I think it's, it's journaling is really important to like, remember things that you want, right? Because if you have an idea of something you want to do and if you don't write it down, you'll forget about it. I, I personally forget about everything. I forget. I don't even remember what I did yesterday. I'm like, I'm, I have the worst memory. So I think like being able to write it every day or um, every other day, it's, it's good because it keeps that focus and the, the thing you're building in the right way. Um, so yeah, I think manifestation and, and, and journaling is crucial for anything you want to do in life. Do you, do you still write every day? Or at least most days? I don't, I don't write every day and I've been since. Uh, my dad passed away and like, I, I'm not like a big, like religious person, but I've been like praying my mom and my dad and my, my, I, my dog passed away. Few, it might sound silly, but I, I lost a, one of my dog a few years ago, but every morning, like every shower, like I remember everything that I want to do. And I remember the things I want to, uh, the things I'm grateful for. And I just like pray them and I thank them for, for, for everything I have in, in life. Um, I think it's important to, not not in a like religious way, but just remembering everything you have and being grateful for for what you have because sometimes it's easy to get lost in in the material stuff and and everything you have and it's important to remember that you like I have a a roof, I have food, and I have all these things that are amazing that not everyone has, and I feel a lot of people forget about that stuff. Um, and I like to enjoy like a good restaurant. I like to enjoy like, like good clothing and everything. But if you, if you enjoy these things, but you can't be grateful for everything you have, I, I, I don't know. I, it, I think it's important. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. No, no, completely. I find 
a little bit similar to you as the older I get at the more towards spirituality, I guess I became as well. No, I really just, yeah. Spiritual. My upbringing was very religious where I grew up in Brazil, a very Catholic country, but I kind of walk away from that for a long time ago. But the older I get, the more I'm like, you know, try to be more spiritual, connect with bigger things, you know, the things that go beyond our understanding. There's, there is a, a comforting part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we all, we, we're all spiritual being in some ways, right? So. I don't know. Like to me, like I try to do good as much as I can and I try to help people as much as I can. I think it's, it's just important just like to maintain a good karma and yeah. Uh, are you someone that can update what's going on on the digital world in terms of digital art? Do you have many artists and people that you follow that you are excited to see their next thing, things like that, even friends perhaps? Uh, I'm the worst artist in the world because I, first, I don't know anything about art history. I don't know most of the artists. I don't know. I'm very, uh, backdated on, on art. Uh, I follow my artist friends and everything, and I'm very excited and proud of like all my artist friends, but I don't, yeah, I, I don't follow art trends or I don't follow like art stuff. Uh, I just try to do. Like, like I said, like I started to do art just to feel better. So yeah. Yeah. I don't even like art in, 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 a, in a way where it's like most of art, I don't understand. And I feel like people will feel the same way looking at my art and it's totally fine. I don't care. Like to me, it's, I do it for myself. Yeah. Art is an interesting thing. I have young kids and when we travel, we try to you know, expose them to museums and things. A lot of times go over their head. I don't think they, because in a technology age that they live in, you know, 11 year old digital art she gets it and she gets excited about it you know she likes to play video game digital art will open up that world for a demographic that perhaps wasn't so much interested in more traditional way and, mm -hmm. and give them a visit in a uh, possibility to, to imagine further you know i mean your work per se mixing a lot of the architecture element with you know uh, a different world and the colors and the elements is just is almost dreamlike and it's just nothing but possibilities right yeah yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's a, it's a new medium that really allow people to immerse them, themselves into art. And that's why I'm, I'm really interested in digital art is I'm a big believer of like immerse, immersion and immersive experiences. So I, I, I see what you mean. I think younger generation will, will like digital art a little bit, probably even more than traditional art. Yeah, it's a medium that they understand, you know, they, they're, they're a part of it, right? It, yeah. As you mentioned before, they don't need to go to school a history class to understand who the great ones were and what made them so great. This one, they're like living, breathing, happening in front of their eyes. They can follow, they can mm -hmm. interact with the artists. They can, you know, participate. They can be part of the exhibition, you know, and interact with it. You said the gallery is something that's very excited about this year. Do you have like goals, like a big plan or, or some or something that you want to accomplish or something that... You know, an exhibition that you want to do somewhere one day or be part of a group of, uh, you know, something that you inspire that uh, you haven't quite uh, achieved it yet. Yeah, I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, uh, like selling out like physical sculptures and stuff like this. I think that's really like my goal is I want like people to have like a fucker under piece inside their own. That's like that's a goal of mine. I want to have I want to have more physical stuff, more permanent, more permanent stuff that. If one day I die and everything, it's, there's, there's going to be like something outside, not, not only on the blockchain, right? As much as blockchain is forever, I want people to experience in, in both ways, in, in a virtual way, in a physical way. Um, so I think like I want to push like the physical sculptures, uh, like edition pieces. I want one of my biggest goals right now is to have like a 40 feet sculpture, you know, like in the, in a city, like that's, I want a big inst physical installation. That's really what I want right now. Uh, I just want to keep doing shows and have friends over and just like do cool shit. Yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's my goal. I just want, I just want people to go see my shows and be like, Oh, that's cool. Like that, that's all I need. Like I like, that's all I want really. No, I agree. Well, you know what? We can substitute that. Uh, tree over there for one of his sculptures. So we look over there every single time we'll go on here on the show. That would be awesome. I'm down. Felgy, there's a couple of questions that I ask everybody before we end the, our conversation. And I want to kind of go through with you almost like a rabbit fire. 
Um, first one, it would be the best compliment you ever got. Uh, I started doing art because of you, Art. That's, to me, that's probably the best. Or if someone spends some time looking at my art and they feel better, that's, I won. I literally, I'm the best artist in the world. If, if when, I, when I received that comment, yeah, it, my ego, like, don't talk to me. I'm, I'm better than everyone. <laughs> that's no, uh, but it's a joke, but I, it makes me feel amazing. Uh, do you have a guilty pleasure? Ah, uh, fine dining. It's, and I, I've been vegan for 10, 12 years and having a good vegan meal in a very nice restaurant, that's my guilty pleasure. Come to Montreal for the opening to see the gallery and I'll ask, all right, where should I go? Where should I try? Where would you send me to? Okay, so it's not vegan, but I'll bring you to Mano Cornuto. That's the place we go. Okay. I'll take you there and we'll, we'll get good pasta and we'll get good drinks. You have opportunity. You're ready to work with some incredible artists and you know, a lot of collaborators. Is there one specific that you love to collaborate? Like an artist? Yeah, an artist. You know, you don't work with no singers in, in mm. any realm. I like, I like Jane Jean. Mm. I like Jane Jean for many reasons. I think his dedication to his craft, his level of technical details, his details in his uh, painting and even like prints, just artwork, uh, is accomplishments to do more, to do shows. I think for me, career wise, James Jean is my biggest inspiration in the meaning of collaborations and attentions to details and, and level of, uh, stay true to himself like to me that's that's i think jane jean is a top of the league in my opinion now what about a movie or a tv show something they recommend us to? Ah, i i don't watch too much tv or or shows uh and if i do i watch like brain dead stuff uh um, i like i like stupid stuff i like like the office i'm there very i'm a bored i'm a that's like people think i'm interesting but i'm very boring and I'm the really office sorry is about great. That. Are you kidding me? The yeah. office is like, you know. No, yeah, exactly. I think it's the best show in the world, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like like TV, reality. Uh, there's a, a French thing, a Quebec thing called Un Spray Presque Parfait, mm. which is very stupid. I like that. I like Occupational Doom. It's like all these stupid stuff that I watch that just like after a big day of doing art and just work, I just like to watch numb thing, you know? Yeah. Now, my last question is, who do you think we should invite be a guest next? Who would you like to, who should we, you mm. recommend us to reach out? I'd like to, I mean, he's my, he's my best friend and he's the most annoying person in, on, on planet. Uh, but he's just annoying me. I think it's, he's a very, in my, in my eyes, a very important artist and, and he's someone who has such an amazing story and his art and craft is so, deep i would love to see victor mascara on your mm. show yeah is i love him is my favorite one is my favorite artist uh after my fiance of course base um uh, but yeah I, I just love victor he's a he's such a great person uh i always say he annoys me because he's just too good at this craft i want to thank you so much for joining today it's been an incredible conversation and i appreciate your honesty and to be able to share with us a little bit about your story, your background, your thoughts, your ideas, your plans for the futures and things like this. I think uh, we were just thrilled to spend a little bit of time with you and just get you know a little bit more. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, always a pleasure. All right, buddy. Well, have a wonderful day. Good luck with the gallery and stay in touch. Perfect. Thank you so much.